Yep. Out of there, Adam issued again from the Walk Shack. Uh, got a hat on today because I um, noticed on the previous vid my hair looks particularly grim with the mad flicky outfit inside, so that show that will should be rectified today. Right. Uh, today I'm reviewing Secrets of the Third Reich by uh, West Wind Productions. There we go. That was it because I remember the last one I didn't really go close enough. Um, it's a weird war game. Weird World War Two. Uh, basically the idea is the uh, background is... Uh, let me, right, let's stop that. Right, yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. The background is is that like Germany by 19 by D-Day isn't as badly equipped as it was in real life. They develop a the atomic bomb, which they use to bomb London. I think it's Baltimore in the background. I mean, like Churchill gets killed in the blast in London, so bit of a difference. Um, and the other thing is they developed this new weapon called V-Gas, which is basically a Resident Evil T-Virus, and they fire it all over the shot, turning big chunks of uh, Allied soldiers into zombies. So, now, that all happens. Oh, the other thing is uh, Russia uh, invades Sweden, which I think they did do in real, in, if, in real life. But in this they invade Sweden, but the Allies then turn on so on uh, Russia and declare war on them. So, you know, Germany's not in as bad a position as it was in that in real as it was in real life. Now the game is sitting now in nineteen forty nine where Europe is basically a post like apocalyptic hellhole and basically um, Germany and USA are on the race again to get the resources to develop a next wave of atomic weapons and that's what the story kind of is at the moment. Uh, the the armies you get to choose from in this game are Britain who are basically they're like a well they haven't really got much of a, their identity at the moment actually but I'd say at the top of my head they're like they got they got tanks which is weird they got weird tanks uh, which is not one of no one's got, got Good solid infantry that doesn't like quake, you know, they're quite brave because they've seen the worst of it. And they've got some light mechs. I think, oh, yeah, they've got armored suits, that's what makes them a little bit different. Uh, USA, which are the techie army of this, they have some pretty, they have one pretty kick ass mech, they have these little light ones which I love called the Manches. Um, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you a couple of my ones. This is the big boy, a Sarge mech. And I'll be pulling him in and out, in and out until you get a good view of it. This is a standard US infantry. If you want better pictures of all my uh, Third Reich stuff, just go on my blog, uh, warpshack.wordpress.com. Uh, and then you have Germany, which is a pretty weird army. They have good mechs, pretty nice infantry, and on top they have zombies and werewolves and a vampire. I kid you not, in their army. Uh, Soviet Union is another pretty cool one. They have normal infantry, uh, they have these super soldiers, which are just cool, cool Siberians, uh, zombies again, and a wear bear called an Urzide. Pretty kick ass. Um, I've been told that France and Spain are going to have armies coming out soon. And Japan is like sometime next year, so I've got, I've, I know France have got things called rad waves, they're like um, people stuck out in the V gas for too long. It hasn't turned them zombies, but they're a bit like mutated and all that. That sounds pretty cool. It's basically like, you know, French resistance, but weird version. Um, right, well, so we'll get on to the game itself. Right, I was always start off with what you need initially. Uh, this game, again, is another one that can be played with little to no figs to a ton of figs. I mean, they have a start scenario, cause, and they sell a start pack to go with this, uh, called Sniper. Uh, it's Germany versus USA. Germany literally has two snipers, and the USA has, I think, one squad. I think it's, 
I don't know if it's a, I think it's a seven man squad or if not a twelve man squad. I don't know. It's somewhere between that, and that is, you know, you can start playing with that, and it's a bloody bloody good scenario. So, you know, but if you was going to get into this for like a proper like you know army on army side, I, it is an issue. They do a start pack for thirty quid, and I mean that is, and you get a lot in there. I think they don't do a rush. I think it's German. It's only Germany and uh, USA they do that for at the moment. But you know, it's really good. Um. Yeah, good value for money game as usual. I don't like spending too much on the well, not coming to walk, I'm not a tight bastard, but you know something's dear, I'm like Ugh. Um right. Big fundamental to this game is there is no stats, as it were, there's no ballistic skill, weapon skill, strength, toughness. They don't exist. Uh figures like are all human in this, this even though you've got werewolves and all that, they're, they're all human to a degree and the idea is is that uh, basically it's, it's their equipment that defines a model from the other so when you go to their army list, it put me off at first, I was like right where's the stats but all it is, it's equipment and then they'll list their equipment, that is their stats I prefer, I love this idea, I think it's really good um, another point of this game is unlike, unlike like the GW games and I've and I think War Machine, uh, the Privateer Press games, uh, this as well, is uh, this game does not force you to buy their own figures. I highly suggest you do, because they're good and then, you know, it's pretty good fact, they're not bad money at all for them. But what's nice is because you, you have mechs in this game and you can completely design those from the ground up. They let you, use, they say, just use what you want and you can just, using their design rules in the book, you can design it up from nothing. I mean, it's fun. It's addictive. It's like having it's like battle tech all over again. It's excellent. And the other thing is you can use whatever World War Two vehicles. As long as it's 28 mil, you can use whatever figs or World War Two vehicles you can get hold of. Try it. Try it. Nothing, mate. My dog scratching. Um, yeah. So you can use whatever World War Two figures or vehicles you can get hold of. You know. So any of you that do like 28 mil, like Rules of Engagement, I think was one of the rule sets, or um, well, basically, if you're having like old bolt action or artisan, whatever, you know, you've already got your starter army. So, you know, for some of you out there, this will only cost you the rule book to get into. Uh, right, what you need to play? Uh, ruler, a tape measure. See, see, I'm not going to say a measuring stick. A tape measure. I remembered this time. 